continue from the Cassian and the Brothers playlist. Farmhold was calm and quiet in the early pre-dawn hours, with fog covering most of the homes and sleeping residents within. Cassian sat on the front porch of his house and contemplated how in a few weeks, after the last of winter's snows had melted, calm and quiet would most likely be a thing longed for. Deeplock was still beating the drums of invasion and war, telling many villages in town under their protection that Farmhold was an existential threat that had to be dealt with. His report stated that along with the ongoing distribution of highly addictive drugs to the populace as a means of keeping them both compliant and motivated, Deep Lock had laid the blame for the uptick in raiders from the deeps on Farmhold. These raids had been the pretense for the drugs, as they had been stated to be supplements to help the town guard perform better in their duties. Before long, entire villages were hooked and dependent on Deep Lock for more of the drugs, and accepted Farmhold's guilt without any argument. Farmholt had seen the uptick of Deep's raids in the region as well, but it was clear the bulk of the raiding activity was focused on those population centers that had yet to accept Deep Lock's protection. How the raiders were being so clearly directed was still unknown, but it seemed as if Deep Lock had some hand in it somehow. Another factor to consider one of many. Farmhold itself had not seen any direct attack by these raiding forces, but that only served to make tensions in town higher. Between those seeking sanctuary and the injured among them, Farmhold had absorbed more than 5,000 people so far. Cathian's attention was shifted from his ruminations by the sight of a messenger being escorted his way. After receiving the sealed scroll case, Cathian entered the house as the messenger was escorted back to the public areas of town. Justique, Lawson, along with Elise and Sonliak, were milling about, engaged in their morning routines. As Cathian broke the Kaisa seal on the case and began to read the declaration within, everyone noticed rather quickly and by the time Cathian had finished reading and looked up, he was the center of a respectfully wide semicircle. Looking around, Cathian took a breath and began. By order of the Kaisa Home Realm Division, all conflicts between Farmhold and Deep Lock are to immediately cease and the leaders of both parties are to prepare themselves to meet for talks to be arbitrated by a Kaisa representative in three days. The silence was thick as everyone processed the content of the decree. Kaisa didn't get involved in the affairs of the lawless lands. Something was amiss, and none present could quite figure it out. Justique inquired as to the identity of the Kaiser representative, where Lawson was more concerned whether or not Deep Lock would abide by the order, or just use these talks as a cover to launch their oncoming assault. Elise assured everyone that if Kaiser chose to involve themselves, refuting their authority would be a deadly mistake for either party. Sonliak merely observed. His thoughts inscrutable. Smiling, Cathian spoke. With who they are sending, I doubt even Deep Lock is foolish enough to tempt it. He handed the decree to Justique to look over. The captain of the Expedis Sentinels, Rassalon, has been chosen as the arbitrator. Continued after the lore. 
by the 9 and 4. Welcome back to the library for this entry of Intro to the Realms. In this entry, we are taking a quick peek at one of the many notable persons and heroes of the realms. This time, we are going to learn about Razalon, head of House Alon, master of the Mega Blade, captain of the Expedis Sentinels, as well as chancellor of history and records for the nation of Zerobrim. Perceptive patrons, regular visitors, and new guests to the library, I am the recorder. And before we continue with the topic of today's entry, allow me to ask you to please like, share, and ensure you're subscribed to Griffin's Library so that you can always have ready access to entries as they release. If you'd like to further support the realms and the library, join us at griffinslibrary.locals. Dot com. Other means of support are detailed in the channel's description page. Thank you for your consideration and support of the realms, no matter what form it might take. Now, on to the entry. Razalon, as his name might suggest, is an NLR. Born of the ancient line of House Alon, but of the groundbound lineage. The only still living descendants of this family line were groundbound due to their heavy involvement during the Wars of Feather and Scale. So, when the 36 Seconds of Judgment came upon the NLR, those not actively away on missions were stripped of their power. The few Alons that escaped this punishment were thought lost during the remaining years of the war or in the first years of the Daemon Vansons reign. This meant that he had only the merest sliver of Analar grace, and could not openly bend reality on a whim like a high, grand, or ascendant Analar would be able to. Likewise, his status as a groundbound marked him as one of the Analar's underclass, and while technically not restricted from pursuing any particular path or journey, he found many doors close to him anyways. While the option was always available for him to walk the path of redemption and have his grace restored to the level of a normal Analar, Raz was still too young for it by the time he had fled Talion, the capital of the Analar. His early years before his flight from Talion were filled with education, self-study, and practice. Raz was a gifted speaker, and his talent for oratory and debate were respected even by his instructors. Many thought he would become a great bard or performer after he had walked the path and gotten a few decades of life under his wings. No one ever seemed to take notice of the frequent mentions of his ancestors' great feats and the artifacts left behind and held in the various museums and archives as anything other than just pride. Overlooking how whenever a detail about an object's placement or ownership was helpfully corrected by a member of his audience, Raz made careful note and scribbled the corrections down. Then, of course, the night of his flight came. Drunk and full of the fire of youth, Raz broke in and stole one of his family's ancient mega blades, which was on display in one of the city's museums. Despite the fact that his was one of the most ancient of houses among the Analar, its representation and power in the current day were all but non-existent. None of their lands, relics, or artifacts were available to be claimed by groundbounds, as there still exists a stark divide between those of proper grace and those that lack it. And Raz was not willing to let it be as such. And if that had been the extent of his crimes, it would most likely have been written off with no action taken. However, the fact that he not only killed a pair of guards, but also somehow made his way into one of the restricted repositories and copied an unknown amount of secret and ancient lore made his flight from Talion a necessity. 
The guards were of course revived and they identified their killer, but the secrets stolen were of great concern. And so, a bounty was issued for his capture. This was in the last centuries before the Age of Stars began, and as such, Raz was easily able to flee and find sanctuary with a group of adventurers in the Dragon Tear Isles. This group was quite active in the area, going from island to island chasing adventure and treasure, and welcomed the Anilar with open arms. By the time that the Anilar discovered his location and sent a team to arrest him, it had been almost two years, and he and his friends were local heroes. In what has got to be one of the greatest acts of Buromancy ever performed, instead of allowing the team of Anilar Marshals to arrest Raz, this group of young heroes instead chose to form the Nation of Zerobrinth and granted Raz diplomatic immunity by virtue of being on this new nation's ruling council. Each of the five nearest islands to theirs joined this nation, all arranged in less than a night. Raz had apparently chosen not only brave, but inventive companions to join, much to the chagrin of the marshals. The Anilar were understandably not very impressed by this, but, as Kai says the legal entity was still relatively new, and these heroes had met all the requirements to form a nation under Kaisa Charter, none of the Anilar present was willing to risk embarrassing the leaders of Talion in an international incident. So empty-handed and less than pleased, they left, assuring all presents that they would be back. As things would turn out, they did never return, and the matter was quietly dropped. Even at this point, it was clear to the wise and perceptive of the realms that Raz and his companions were rising stars. Having found the sealed caves containing the lost Teldrakes and Warforms, and their afterwards ironclad protection of them as they were slowly reintroduced to the realms that they had been created for millennia earlier. Raz would continue to help in the full consolidation and setup of this new nation, serving as its chief diplomat and secret financier. Between the wealth of discovered relics and artifacts they had found in their adventures, and Raz's keen eye in the matters of trade and betting, he had become ridiculously wealthy. He used that wealth mostly to aid the nation they had formed and ensure that infrastructure that had been promised was delivered, as well as ensuring that their many, many projects were able to be pursued. However, at some point, several of his allies convinced him to invest in himself and in an extreme way. Raz was not a slouch in the field of battle. But, despite his skill with the Mega Blade, he was finding it hard to keep up with his ambitious fellows. So, he commissioned the crafting of a set of armor and a new Mega Blade, one to contain elements of a far older model from the War of Feather and Scale, and he invested sums that could buy entire starships in the modern Age of Stars. The war took months, and included no less than a hundred different craftsmen and enchanters from across Jamamar. Finally delivered, fully enchanted and augmented, the new equipment allowed Rassilon to become known as the Slayer of Sky Cities. The armor would allow him to fight without fear, faster, stronger and more fully protected than ever before. The Mega Blade was enchanted to near bursting, it capable of shifting its size and its form from its standard 7 foot blade length and 6 inch width of blade to over 100 feet long and nearly 5 feet wide, and retain, for Raz at least, the speed, control and manipulation 
of its normal form. Between its many enhancements, the armor's own, and Raz's knowledge and use of the ancient Analar Megablade forms, Raz only needed to become present in a battle zone for the fight to become a settled affair. Between this and similar improvements amongst his allies, with the beginning of the Age of Stars, saw all of their statuses rise across the realms. The locating and destruction of the origin of the Harvesters, those automatons that sought out the Celestially Touched and killed them to harvest their energies, ranked amongst their high points. However, the rescued of the revered and their alliance with the resurrected nation of the Necrotai Empire eclipsed even this great feat. When the Necrotai Dragwa Treaty was made in the sands of the Isles of Mist, it was Raz who served as Kaisa's voice in the matter, as well as ensuring that the treaty would be observed by all parties. His abilities as a statement continued to grow, as well as the fact that, some time after the recovery of the Revered, Raz saw his grace elevated to that of a full-fledged Analar. With this, he was also able to pursue many rights for his house under Analar tradition and law, and this saw the reformation of what was considered by many a lost or dead house. It took decades, but between his efforts, and those of other Alon descendants. Raz was eventually recognized as the head of the house, and thus was able to see many artifacts and relics he once wrote stinging verses about returned to their proper house. In the years afterwards, during the Age of Stars, Raz served as diplomat across the realm. Few ever questioned his fairness, and fewer questioned his ability to enforce any terms that might otherwise be thoughtlessly broken. That was, of course, until the nations of Criterion, Dragwa Home City, along with the Celestian Collective, united together to build the Expedus Sentinels, and decided that a ship built and staffed by the various races the Analar had created and spawned should be captained by an Analar for irony's sake, if nothing else. The subtle jab at the Lord Protector of the Analar by elevating the head of a dead house to a station equal to his own did not go unnoticed by Nicomar, who serves as captain of the Analar's expedition vessel, the Celestial. Thus far, no response beyond verbal jabs at meetings of the fleet has manifested. Not that this should be trusted, of course. The fact that Raz was one of the very few non-divines in the realms thought capable of presenting a threat to such enormous craft certainly didn't hurt his consideration in the matter either. It was known that Raz was capable of breaching star metal with his mighty strikes, and that made him a perfect defender for what was built more as an exploratory craft and not one of war even though, of course, it was no slouch in that department either. Between his duties as captain and as diplomat for not only Kaisa when they required, but still on occasion zero Brent, Raz is kept busy and often forgotten in the many centuries that have passed since. However, whenever his presence is felt, there are very few that do not take Razalon seriously and treat him with the respect that is expected for whatever role he is filling at the time. Raz himself is a humorous soul, with wordplay being the mildest of his lingual exercises, even when the jokes cross languages. He would rather be a reason to smile or laugh than to fear, but he is not afraid to use force when words fail. When not directly engaged in his work, he can often be seen telling stories and sharing drinks in any one of the various watering holes, pubs, or bars across the realms. Regardless of where he is to be found, 
Bezalon is sure to be a kind, if sarcastic, force and voice in whatever matters he is involved in. His wealth of knowledge, built on those secrets first taken centuries ago, as well as the number of contacts he has accrued over the intervening years, make Raz one of those individuals whose reach far extends beyond the reach of even his expansive blade. And with that, this brief introduction to Razalon is at its end. I do hope you have a better understanding of this Analar of Esteem. From on-the-run bard and thief, to national leader and international diplomat, Raz has seen his star rise and find its place amongst the skies of the realms as a hero. Perceptive patrons, regular visitors, and of course, new guests to the library, I, as always, have been the recorder, and I thank you for your time, interest, and support of Griffin's Library and the Realms of Jamamar. Until you next find your way back to the library for your next entry of Intro to the Realms, by the Nine and Four, be well, take care of yourselves, and each other. Now, back to our tale. Three days later, in the sky midway between Farmhold and Deep Block, a sky city appeared. Looking very much like a scaled down model of the Expedus Sentinels, it held its position about a mile above the ground. It had flags and pennants flying from various places to clearly signify the craft's prestigious authority for all to see. Less than an hour later, transports from both cities lifted off and made their way to the Sky City. Within three hours of its arrival, all parties had arrived and were sitting down for their first round of talks. Both had brought a small cadre of diplomatic advisors with them, and talks began with Razalon explaining that due to the scale of weaponry being brought to bear in this dispute, several Kaisa members had come forth with concerns as to the threat to their own holdings. Murmurs began on both sides of the table, as advisors conferred with one another. It was a bold claim, as the nearest Kaisa member state was Domnitra, and that was at least 700 miles northeast of Farmhold. Deep Lock's leader, a middle-aged man with streaks of white in his long, dark hair, voiced confusion as his forces were only capable of being a threat to Kaisa members if they were foolish enough to come to him, like Farmhold had so brazenly done. Before Cathian could respond to the barb, Razalon clarified it was the arsenal of Farmhold that was of concern. Farmhold's side of the table grew very quiet as Raz explained that Farmhold's long-range weapon systems were said to be capable of anti-orbital defense. Having such weapons was not a concern, Raz said. The use of such weapons against a similarly planetarily bound foe was. With missile batteries that were estimated to have no less than a thousand miles of range, and hyperballistic guns capable of nearly half that if not more. This was the mere minimum based on the intelligence Kaisa had obtained, and there were theories that due to the technologies and magic suspected to be at play, both rumored and confirmed, Farmold was possibly capable of striking any point on the planet of Jamamar with devastating force. The years of training paid dividends, as Cathy's expression never wavered. But Deep Lock's leader began to confer with his advisors in a hushed frenzy. And he allowed only the thinnest of smiles as Kaisa concerns were accepted by Cathian as valid, and thus he accepted their jurisdiction in the matter before them. It was honestly merely a formality, as Kaisa was going to have their say regardless of any objections. 
but it did take the initiative away from Deep Lock, as they were clearly intent on contesting Kaisa's jurisdiction. Deep Lock's side of the table exploded in protest, as it seemed they had counted on Farmhold to reject Kaisa's interference in the affairs of the lawless lands along with them. However, Kathleen's acceptance not only forced the talks to actually happen, but it was a not so subtle sign that Deep Lock had grossly underestimated the drive and determination of their northerly neighbors. For the first time since the talks began, Deep Lock's leader looked unsettled, and his scrutiny of Kathleen for any sign of this being a bluff was intense enough to weld star metal. Kathleen calmly confirmed that Deep Lock itself was well within the range of any number of weapon systems within Farmhold's arsenal, and that regardless of the success or failure of Deep Lock's impressively assembled forces, that force would not have a home, base, or kingdom to return to after their campaign of unwarranted aggression. While it can't be said that it charmed Deep Lock's delegation, by their hollow smiles it was clear that they understood how tragically outplayed they were by this comically young upstart and his gaggle of desperate allies. The kingdom of Deep Lock was over 1,500 years old, and they had held varying degrees of dominion in the regional area, as well as near total military supremacy for over a thousand miles in all directions for most of its existence. And in less than a decade, Farmhold had assembled and built what amounted to a planet-wide orbital strike capability, just for their defensive, fixed-place systems. At best, Deep Lock was looking at a case of mutual destruction, as their assault force could most likely sack and take Farmhold, but not quickly enough to prevent Deep Lock from being destroyed in response to their crossing of the border. At worst, their forces would be wiped off the map before even getting within a hundred miles of Farmhold, and Deep Lock would still be wiped off the face of Jamamar in a series of precision strikes. Understandably, after a small recess to confer amongst themselves, Deep Lock were now more than ready to talk, and thus negotiations began in earnest. Raz the Lawn hoped to conclude them within a week, and he would be proven correct, to his everlasting and total regret. To be continued. If you'd like to contribute to the further exploration and explanation of the realms, please consider leaving a comment, a like, and sharing the video around. I read all the comments and make efforts to reply to each. Thank you for helping to grow the channel and know I look forward to each and every one of your comments. Other methods of support can be found in the channel's description. Thank you for watching.